All right, welcome everybody. So um, I'm just doing a little uh, pilot episode of a series that we're thinking about trying to do here at the dojo where we talk about some interesting bagpipe techniques and share them with you guys. And that was an example of what we call the Scott and the Brave test. Um, and the story goes something like this. The number one thing the number one rule for me when I'm playing the full pipes, and it's especially true uh, when I'm working with beginners and intermediates, is that your pipes should not be too hard to play. Uh, the bottom line is, I think, you really kind of want to be comfortable at all times when you're playing. So, okay, obviously maintenance matters such as an airtight bag, tight joints, well-calibrated drone reads, et cetera, et cetera. We talk about that a lot at the Piper's Dojo. That's extremely important, but one thing that's really overlooked a lot of the time is the strength of the pipe chanter read. If your pipe chanter read is too hard for you, okay, no amount of good maintenance is going to get your bagpipe feeling comfortable. I think uh, that's sort of common sense, right? So you can perfectly maintain your bagpipe, get it perfectly set up, but if the chanter read itself is too hard for you, that's going to be a huge bottleneck and you're not going to be able to get, uh, you're not going to be able to get around that especially in the early stages. So what factors go into what strength read might be right for you? Obviously, um, if you're a beginner, you're not gonna be playing a read that's quite as hard as someone who's advanced, at least not by default. Although not all advanced players are playing hard reads. We'll talk more about that momentarily as well. But anyway, factors that go into this, right? Your mouth and lip strength is really important, especially as a beginner you might not have the strength built up yet. And even as an intermediate, right, working on that strength, quote unquote, losing your lips might be a common thing. Um, I, I think about diaphragm strength, maybe, you know, like that muscle that pushes up and allows our lungs to expel air with some force, you know, that strength, other aspects of physical capacity, you know, uh, younger players versus older players. There's a, probably, in many cases, a physical capacity difference, right? So if you have a uh, you know, young, experienced read maker picking out a read, they might not quite have the same uh, basic physical capacity. As a matter of fact, they might be a lot stronger. How much playing have you been doing lately? This is a big one for me. Uh, now that we're getting in, into the off season here, uh, my capacity is a lot less than it would be during July when I've been doing a lot of playing and I've been working on my general strength for the band. So anyway, long story short, these factors vary for everybody. All right, and they can vary uh, based on the time of year, day to day, depending on your mood, all sorts of stuff. So with all of that in mind, it's important to realize and to accept that only you can determine whether or not the read you're playing is the right strength for you. And you can't leave it up to someone else. You can't, uh, you can't phone your read maker and ask them for an easy read because uh, literally the way easy feels for them, it's gonna be very different than how it feels for you. Don't ask your pipe major to do it, and uh, a lot of times pipe majors will uh, prescribe reads to their players, which is a dangerous thing to get into because they might not be in touch with what is appropriate for other players. And I've made this mistake many, many times over many, many years as well, just handing out reads and thinking to myself, oh, so-and-so should be able to play that strength read, uh, where that might not have been realistic whatsoever. So, uh, moving on, I'm certain, I'm 100% sure I'm not the person, the first person to come up with this, but it eventually occurred to me that we could sort of design a test that's unique to each individual player. You know, we could design a test that would work for everybody. All right, now it's based off my own experience and the basic idea is if I can play my own chanter for X period of time. I know that chant is set up well. I know it's quote unquote the right strength for me based on years and years of experience. So if I can play it for X amount of time, then whatever read I give to someone else, they should be able to play it for a similar amount of time given their own unique sets of strengths uh, and perhaps you know if they have any uh, areas of weakness, not weakness in the 
negative sense, but just maybe they're not quite as developed in those capacity issues that we talked about. But uh, regardless, they should be able to play the same amount of time with their read. And uh, so I, I took the read I was playing at the time, stuck it in my mouth, and I started playing Scott and the Brave. And I uh, just about keeled over and I ran out of air right after the first line. So I mouth blew it, just like you saw at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna blow the read with my mouth, okay? And you can see like by doing that, I'm measuring, I'm getting a, a good sense of what lip strength I'm able to manage. I'm getting a good sense of what strength and physical capacity I have. But just with one breath, you should be able to go at least that far, right? And then of course, when we put it in the full bagpipes, we'll be able to squeeze and so on. But uh, we want to just have this nice simple test that we can use. All right, and that is the idea. I wanna play that for one line and be able to get through it. If you can't make it to the end of one line of Scott and the Brave, what does that indicate? It indicates that your read is too hard uh, for you and it's probably not a great idea to stick that in your pipes and start to work on your playing because that's just gonna be a little bit too much for you to handle. And then the other thing that does occasionally happen is sometimes you go significantly more than one line of Scott and the Brave and what does that indicate? Well, that indicates that that read is probably a little bit too easy for you and not the optimal read for you to choose. Okay, now, uh, I'll, let's just do that one more time here together. I'll show you that litmus test. So uh, I'm gonna breathe in, big breath. Sorry, I'll switch back to this mic. I'm gonna breathe in and take a big breath here. Um, and I'm not going to stop at any point. I'm going to see when I run out of air. That's the big thing. We're not, not gonna take any uh, additional breaths or anything like that. Okay, big breath in. So in reality, right, this read, uh, I was able to play the entire part of Scott and the Brave, which is way, way, way longer than the actual litmus test that I'm going for. I wanted to get to the end of that line. Da, dee, da, a, dee, a, da, a, dum. I should die out. I should run of air, out of air right around there. But instead, I kept going and going and going. So what does that indicate about this particular read that I'm using for the demo video? Uh, it indicates that that read is much easier than optimal. You could sort of hear evidence of that in the fact that when I started, uh, the chanter squeaked because uh, the read is very, very easy in strength, right? So that read is not going to be optimal to me. Now, let's just finish up with a couple of uh, you know, questions that are definitely gonna pop up. Number one, common sense rule has to apply, all right, to this rule here. So thing number one is, let's say you make it 14 beats in instead of the 16 beats that we're looking for. Like, what happens if you make it almost to the end of the line, but not quite? Does that mean you should throw that read out? No, doesn't mean that at all. That is probably going to work fine, just based on the common sense rule. It might just be a cold day or something, and the read is just a little bit harder, or what have you. Now, meanwhile, if you can only make it three beats, that's a bad sign. And I think you'd be surprised. A lot of people try this test, and they only make it four or five beats in and then they run out of air at that point. So that indicates the read is much uh, too difficult for you. Now, if you make it just a little bit beyond the end of the line, same thing, common sense rule applies, that read's probably good. Now in this case, I went drastically over the mark with this particular read. So I would not wanna you know, play this read for any particular length of time because it does not uh, match up with that basic test, okay? Now uh, the next question that's gonna pop up is, uh, if we are looking for an easy bagpipe, all right, then why should we try to go for more strength if more strength is not necessary? It's like, so another way of asking that question is, why don't we just play a super easy read forever? And the answer to that question is, harder reads do have some benefits, okay? Now, the benefits of a harder read might include such things as more volume, 
uh, more stability in the tuning and the tone, and it's easier to, to present a steady sound when the reed's a little bit more robust, okay, and has a little bit more wood. Um, you might also have some subjective things, like you'll get a, a better crackling sound off the chanter itself. Um, you'll get some of that projection and all those fun things. Those are probably all true things, and those are potential benefits. The most important thing to realize, though, the most important thing is, if you're uncomfortable with your instrument, okay, none of that positive stuff matters nearly as much as working to achieve a state of comfort with your bagpipe because that's the number one most important thing. So anyway, that is what I think about that. And I thought I would put it out there on the internets and share it with the world. And I would love to hear if you're out there listening, if you have any thoughts on this matter, if you disagree or agree, or if you have some other tips, we'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get some of that feedback. And for now, I think what we'll do is end that sort of pilot episode of some of these technical tips here that we're going to be putting out uh, over the upcoming weeks and months, hopefully, if it goes well. All right. Uh, let's see. What button do I press? Okay. Well, have a nice day, everyone. 